want to talk for a couple of minutes about biometric safes. Now, this particular model, the MicroVault XL from GunVault, comes with a fingerprint scanner that really is state of the art. And that's the reason I like the GunVault products. And in particular, that's the reason that I like this type of biometric lock. This biometric scanner is one that you swipe your finger across. It's going to read your fingerprint. It's going to compare it to the fingerprint model that it's got stored inside of its memory. And then it's either going to reject or accept the fingerprint and then open up the safe when appropriate. Now, the way these work, they've come a long way. You know, originally, these things honestly were not something that I counted on. I much preferred to push the buttons and tie my code in, know what my one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever the pattern was, code pushes was going to allow me to get into my gun. But now that these new algorithms and the new scanners have come so far, this is actually my preference for quick access inside the home for a defensive firearm. So let's talk about this. First of all, you're going to be able to program 120 different fingerprints into this system if you want to. Now, obviously, you're probably not going to have a situation where 120 different people need to get into the vault. But let's think about it. If I want to program in my right hand and my left hand in case I'm injured, in case I'm carrying someone, right away that's two. Maybe I've got a, a girlfriend, husband, wife, daughter, son, somebody else, a roommate. Now I take that two and multiply it by two or three or four. Now I'm up to eight, 10, 12 different fingerprints. Plus, I may want to do some other fingers other than just my index finger. Maybe I'm going to swipe with my middle finger. Maybe I'm going to use my ring finger. Well, if I take three or four fingers from each person on each hand, and I've got three or four people getting into the safe, all of a sudden we start getting into the dozens of different fingerprints that we want this to save. Personally, I've also liked to use the learn function for the same finger redundantly. So I might do my index finger on both hands two or three times, so that if I happen to be at this angle one time and this angle another time and over here on this other side another time, there's a higher level chance that this is going to actually recognize my finger. Remember, under stress, you may not get that perfect placement. So I like to go ahead and teach the system my finger several times, even from the same finger on the same hand. So it's real easy to see how 120 fingerprints may seem like a lot, but as soon as you put this in an environment with a couple of different family members, you start thinking about redundant programming, and you want to use multiple fingers on multiple hands for each person, all of a sudden 120 seems really valuable. The other important thing to know about GunVault's algorithm is that it's constantly learning. Every single time it recognizes a fingerprint, it updates the pattern. So over time, a number of years, uh, maybe different uh, times of year, different hydration states that your body may be in, there are going to be small changes in your fingerprint size and in the pattern on your finger that this scanner is reading. Well, the algorithm allows it to keep up with those changes. It also allows it to know whether or not it's a tiny difference caused by, again, maybe the finger is a little bit larger because you're holding more water, maybe you're not as hydrated and your fingerprint's gonna come down a little bit, that pattern's gonna change. This system is able to figure that out. What that means is you're gonna have a very low false reject rate or a false acceptance rate. Now a false reject rate, that's when I need to get in here, but I can't because it's rejecting me even though it should recognize me. Very low rejectance rate on these safes. A false acceptance rate is when someone who isn't authorized to have access to this system tries to push the button and swipe their finger in hopes that they may be recognized and that the safe will just pop open. And again, this algorithm makes that very, very unlikely. How does the system work? Very, very simply. Now I'm gonna stabilize this. One thing I have learned is that you wanna make sure that the safe is stable. It's much harder to get it to read accurately if I'm moving it while I'm swiping it. So I'm gonna place it down on the table. I'm gonna push the button, I hear the beep, I swipe my finger across, I hear two more beeps, and you probably heard the safe mechanism release. It's spring-loaded, so it actually pops it up a little bit, and then I simply put my hand down there and open it up. Now, you can turn the beeps off. If you want a silent mode for your home defense gun, that's fine. You can go with a silent mode. I close it again, and let's just say I don't have my little finger, my pinky finger is not programmed in. I push the button, sweep, and I get a red light with no beep. So this green light turns red when I get a rejection. And again, this finger is not programmed in, so I get that rejection. I go back to my index finger and try to get a good swipe on there, and we get that pop. 
And again, that's one of the reasons why, if this were the safe that I was actually using for my home defense gun, I would program in several different angles. That was a perfect example of where my odd angle coming in at the side meant I didn't get it on the first swipe. Obviously, as I repositioned, swiped again, it popped open. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to set the system up so that I can program in my pinky finger and you'll see how this works. I'm gonna hold down the learn button. I get a green light here. I'm gonna close the safe, get in front of the scanner. I hear two beeps the first time, a single beep the second time, and then two beeps again, and now the green light is off. That tells me that I should have just been able to successfully program in the new fingerprint. Press the button and pop the safe open. Now, I could repeat that process, obviously, for all of my fingers. I could do my other hand. I could get other people inside of the household to go through exactly the same process. And if I ever get into a situation where I have too many fingerprints in there, or if I sell the safe to someone else, we can use the delete button to erase whatever happens to be in the memory. So again, these have come a long way. The Gun Vault biometric safes are exactly the safe that I use. In fact, this is one of my safes. This is one that I use inside of the vehicle, the PDN Tour Truck, regularly while I travel. The nice thing about these vaults is they also come with security cables that allow me to secure them inside of a hotel room or inside of a vehicle or anywhere inside of my home. The larger vaults, including the TAC vault that Gun Vault makes, also use the biometric scanner. Look for this one. Look for any of the products from Gun Vault when it comes to securing your defensive firearm in a way that allows you to access it very quickly when you need it. Biometric or keypad, either one will work for you. My particular option is to go with the new biometric scanner because I trust the algorithm, I trust it to make sure that I can get into it when I need to, and the firearm inside is the one that I'm trusting to protect me in the worst case scenario. Thank mm -hmm. you.